Hey, Bill, I can't get the idle mixture ratio right on this job. What am I doing wrong? It could be you're starting at the finish, Ted. If the air-fuel ratio won't adjust within limits on the idle mixture screws alone, the engine may need tuning. A tune-up? <laughs> There's only about 5,000 miles on this car, and it seems to run okay. Ted, never take anything for granted, especially when emission control is involved. You simply can't hold emissions down and still get a good performance unless all the tune-up settings are within specs. You see, earlier models allowed some leeway on tune-up settings because we were only concerned with performance and economy. But now, with emission control, all the tolerances are tighter, and if you check them out as you should, you essentially do a tune-up. In fact, even on models which only have positive crankcase ventilation, exhaust emissions can be reduced quite a bit when you improve engine performance by doing a tune-up, provided, of course, that the engine is otherwise in good mechanical condition. That brings up something else, Bill. I've noticed that some other models have different emission controls. I'm new at this, and it's a bit confusing. Well, it so happens that emission control is my favorite subject, so maybe I can help you sort it all out. Bill, since you're a student of the art, why don't you go back to the beginning of emission control on our cars to give Ted and others an idea of how it all developed. <laughs> okay, Tech. Now, that will let me show off my collection of Tech reference books on the general subject. Before we talk about control systems or components, let's see where the air-polluting emissions come from. Basically, we are concerned with crankcase blow-by vapors, fuel system vapor loss, and engine exhaust emissions. The air pollutants include unburned gasoline vapor, also called hydrocarbon, from the crankcase, the fuel system, and the exhaust. Added to this are carbon monoxide and nitrogen oxides, which come only from the exhaust. Now, crankcase blow-by is essentially the high-pressure gases that are forced past the engine piston rings into the crankcase during the compression and the power strokes. Crankcase vapors are mainly composed of unburned air fuel mixture and exhaust gas. In engines without positive crankcase ventilation, air polluting blow-by vapors pass directly to the atmosphere, mainly through a road draft tube on the engine. Air passing the open end of the draft tube produces low pressure airflow through the crankcase to remove the vapors. To control crankcase air polluting vapors, we began with a positive crankcase ventilating system which eliminates the draft tube. Air enters at the oil filler cap and is drawn through the engine into the intake manifold. The vapors then pass into the combustion chambers and are burned as part of the air fuel mixture. The heart of the basic positive crankcase ventilation system is the PCV valve. Manifold vacuum acts on this valve to provide positive flow crankcase ventilation. Our present fully closed crankcase ventilation system works basically like the earlier positive system, except that the incoming air first passes through the carburetor air cleaner housing and then enters the engine through the crankcase inlet filter. The oil filler cap in this system seals the filler opening when it is installed. If blow-by is excessive or the PCV valve clogs, the resulting crankcase pressure buildup causes the vapor to flow back through the carburetor air filter and into the engine. No crankcase vapor escapes to the atmosphere. But if the crankcase vapor backs up, it'll clog the carburetor air filter, won't it? Right. An oil-clogged air filter can cause hard starting, power loss, stalling, low gas mileage, and dirty exhaust. Just remember that an oily filter is your cue to check out the crankcase ventilation system from one end to the other. Any other questions, Ted? Well, not exactly. But I can see that there's more to the story than idle mixture adjustments. You're getting the idea, Ted. Components that affect emissions affect each other. In other words, think in terms of systems instead of separate parts, which brings us to the next stage of our development story. The emission control system used on some 66 and 67 models is called the cleaner air package. Tune-up specs for cap and non-cap cars are different, so be sure to look for the identifying vehicle emission label before making any adjustments. Now, positive ventilation takes care of crankcase emission. So additional cap system changes are concerned mainly with reducing emission of air pollutants in the exhaust. This is done mainly with engine modifications, leaner mixtures, higher idle speeds, and ignition timing changes. Even without cap, properly tuned engines produce a relatively clean exhaust under most operating conditions. However, the emissions increase when the vehicle is decelerating. You see, when decelerating, the throttle is at idle position, but the rear wheels drive the engine faster than idle speed. The nearly closed throttle limits the amount and density of the mixture taken into the cylinders, and this makes the mixture hard to ignite. In addition, 
Leftover exhaust gas in the cylinders also dilutes the mixture, which as a result does not burn completely. So with poor mixture ignition and incomplete combustion, there is unburned and partly burned mixture in the exhaust. Now, on idle, non-cap cars use a relatively rich idle mixture to give smooth operation at low engine speeds. Obviously, a rich idle mixture puts more unburned hydrocarbon and carbon monoxide into the exhaust. To reduce these emissions, the cap system carburetor is specially calibrated to provide leaner mixtures at idle and low speeds, and idle speed is higher than before. The distributor is designed to give retarded timing at idle, and a special vacuum control valve is used on many models to advance the timing during deceleration. The vacuum advance control valve provides maximum vacuum advance during deceleration to improve mixture ignition. The valve works with the carburetor to control the vacuum applied to the vacuum advance unit on the distributor. With advanced ignition timing during deceleration, combustion starts earlier and allows time for more complete burning of the mixture. As a result, deceleration exhaust emissions are greatly reduced. All right, fellas. Before we go on, I'd like to add a point about vacuum valve application. You see, the torque converter in a torque flight transmission is designed to be more efficient when the vehicle is driving than when it's coasting. As a result, the engine slows down more quickly in a torque flight equipped car than it does in a manual transmission car. Because of this rapid engine slowdown, exhaust emissions are relatively low during deceleration, and there is little need for the advanced timing provided by the vacuum advance control valve. So? So that's why there are some cap models without a vacuum control valve. Key wrecked. And valve or no valve, get rid of any ideas you might have about improving cap tune-up settings on your own. You'll only invite trouble. Right, Bill? Yep. The specs are tight because there's more to cap than appears on the surface. You see, in addition to recalibrated carburetors and distributors, there are refinements in the combustion chambers, the manifold heat control, engine temperature control, and fuel mixture distribution. Even the choke calibration is different. Now, here are a few cap tune-up hints. To prevent any vacuum advance when checking the timing, the vacuum line at the distributor must be disconnected and plugged. This precaution is very important on cap cars because at idle, the throttle plate is right at the edge of the carburetor vacuum advance port where it could cause unwanted vacuum advance. Also, a slight leak past the vacuum control valve could reach the distributor vacuum unit. When setting cap engine idle, make sure that the speed is not higher than specified. If the idle is too fast, you'll get some centrifugal advance, and this will make the basic timing setting late. In some cases, only 50 revs over specs can pick up some centrifugal advance. Along with this, unwanted centrifugal advance can hold the idle higher than the adjusted speed when the throttle closes on deceleration. If this happens, you don't get normal engine slowdown, like when the fast idle linkage hangs up. Hold her right there, Bill. It's time to turn the record over. So if someone will oblige, we'll continue with the emission control story. Well, the next stage of development adds refinements which further reduce emissions. Carburetor and distributor calibrations are changed, and there are modifications in the combustion chambers, camshaft, manifold heat control, and fuel mixture distribution. Choke calibration is also changed. The most obvious changes on these models are in the idle circuits of the carburetors. Some models limit the idle mixture screw adjustment with a sealed stop screw. Others, like the Holley single barrel, use an internal idle mixture limiter orifice plus an adjusting needle. Some carburetors have a single idle air bleed adjusting screw instead of the usual pair of mixture adjusting screws. In these carburetors, the maximum rich idle mixture is preset internally, leaving the air bleed screw for final adjustment. In addition to the single screw air bleed adjustment, these carburetors also have a vacuum operated check valve which adds extra air to the mixture when the throttle valve opens slightly. This makes the off idle mixture leaner to further reduce exhaust emissions. Now, on later models, the idle mixture adjusters have external limiter caps. On the 69s, you'll find the vacuum advance control valve only on the 170 manual transmission 6 and all 426 Hemi models. 69 choke modulation is improved, and again the distributor timing advance calibration is changed. You'll find that distributor specifications differ from previous models. Point gap remains the same, but the dwell angle is different. Along with other changes, 
The 69 cooling system thermostat ratings are raised 10 degrees. Since engine temperature affects exhaust emissions, you can expect changes in the thermostat ratings right along with changes in the emission control system. So watch those specs. And while we're on specs, one thing in this story on emission control should be coming through loud and clear. Change is the name of the game. With continuing refinements planned for emission controls, the time has passed when you can assume that last year's tune-up specs and procedures are okay for current models. Okay, Bill, bring the story up to date. Right, Tech. Additional controls are added on some 70 models, and the name is now the Cleaner Air System. The name has changed, but CAS is basically a continuation of the Chrysler concept of emission control by more complete combustion inside the engine itself. In the engine, combustion chamber shape is modified to expose more area for more complete burning of the mixture. Compression ratios are lowered to permit operation on lower octane fuels and to raise exhaust gas temperatures for additional emission reduction. The intake manifold hotspot area below the carburetor is modified to heat up more quickly so leaner warm-up mixtures can be used. The exhaust manifold heat control valve is also modified to work more effectively with the redesigned hotspot. The choke on these models opens sooner to lean out the warm-up mixture. A thin wall stainless steel well transfers exhaust crossover heat to the choke coil more efficiently to heat the coil faster. As in previous engines, camshaft design is modified to alter the intake and exhaust valve overlap. Since overlap affects mixture flow in and out of the combustion chambers, camshaft design changes right along with other engine emission control refinements. The thermostat temperature rating for the 1970 models is 190 degrees for all engines except the 318 and the 383 two-barrel and the 440 standard V8s. These three engines have 195 degree thermostats. And on the 71s, the thermostat temperature rating goes down to 185 for all engines, which backs up what I said earlier about watching the specs for changes. And now back to you, Bill. Carburetor calibration is leaner than on previous models and all now have external limiter caps on the idle mixture adjusters. Internal improvements provide better idle mixture distribution and off-idle mixture control to work with the leaner mixtures. Higher idle speed is now used on our high-performance engines to reduce emission both on idle and deceleration. A throttle stop solenoid allows the throttle to close below the idle setting when the engine is shut down. This prevents after-run or dieseling, which can result from the high idle speed setting. On our 383 and 440 engines, the distributor has a timing retard solenoid connected to switch contacts on the carburetor throttle stop. When the throttle closes on idle or deceleration, the timing retards and works with a higher idle mixture flow to produce more complete combustion. Before you go on, I'd like to add a few things to watch when servicing the solenoid type distributor. First, if you remove the vacuum hose for any reason, do it carefully so you won't upset the vacuum advance calibration. In addition, remember that the distributor solenoid must be connected and energized when checking or setting the timing, so you'll have normal retard. However, the solenoid is disconnected at the carburetor when checking or setting point well, because no retard is wanted. Thank you, Tech. Now with CAS on the 70 models, we also get the heated air intake system on all engines except some high performance models. Of course, engines with the fresh air scoop do not have the heated air intake. With the heated air intake system, air entering the carburetor in cold weather is heated to allow faster, more efficient engine warm-up, to provide warm weather drivability and to reduce emissions during warm-up. You see, the heated air intake system makes it possible to modify the engine design operating temperatures, ignition timing, and carburetor calibration to more closely suit average operating conditions. Because of these changes, less choking is needed, so emissions are reduced during warm-up. Some 70 and all 71 models have the vapor saver or evaporation control system. Like the carburetor and distributor solenoids and the heated air intake system, the vapor saver is covered in the service manuals and recent Master Tech reference books, so I'll only touch the high spots. The vapor saver is a closed system that prevents loss of fuel vapors from the carburetor and fuel tank through evaporation or expansion. When the engine is stopped, the vapors pass through vent lines to the crankcase 
where they are held until removed by the crankcase ventilation system. When the engine is running, the fuel vapors are purged from the crankcase along with crankcase blow-by. Positive ventilation flow draws the vapors into the intake manifold and combustion chambers. The vapor saver system normally requires no servicing. The cleaner air system on some 71 models also includes the NOx system to control oxides of nitrogen in the exhaust. NOx emission is controlled basically by lowering peak combustion temperatures. In other words, cooler burning produces less oxide emission. To control combustion temperatures, NOx engines have more valve overlap plus retarded ignition timing at low car speeds. A 185 degree thermostat holds cooling system temperatures relatively low. For retarded timing, the distributor vacuum unit is controlled by a solenoid vacuum valve connected between the distributor and the carburetor. The solenoid valve is operated by switches that sense outside air temperature and car speed. The NOx distributor holds in retard position on acceleration up to 30 miles per hour. But if outside air temperature goes above 60 degrees, the system automatically returns to normal timing advance operation. Now, the NOx controls for manual transmission cars are somewhat simpler. Only three parts are used. A transmission on-off switch, a thermal switch, and a solenoid vacuum valve identical to the one used on automatic transmission cars. In addition, on some NOx installations, you'll find a temperature-operated vacuum bypass valve. This valve senses engine overheating and bypasses the NOx system to provide vacuum timing advance operation until engine temperature returns to normal. Okay, Bill. That's as good a review of the development of Chrysler's emission controls over the years as I've heard anywhere. But you haven't mentioned anything about UCAP, so I'll use that to wrap up our session. UCAP stands for Used Car Cleaner Air Package. It is designed to reduce emissions of our older models, which do not have exhaust emission control. The kit includes a special vacuum advance control valve, a length of hose, an identification decal, and complete installation instructions. Now to sum up our story. Always think of emission control as a system. Remember that engine performance and emission control are closely related. That tune-up specs and procedures must be followed exactly. And that you can expect systems and specs to continue changing for some time. Thanks to Bill and Ted for bringing us up to date on emission controls. Since specs and procedures are more important than ever before, be sure to dig into those service manuals and review your collection of tech reference books on the general subject. And one last thing, don't forget to move the film to the review frames that follow.